So let's take a look at curl and divergence. Now before I give the formulas for both curl and divergence, both of the formulas have a symbol which is written as an upside down triangle, and that is known as del. Now this symbol looks very familiar because when we combine it with the function f, this was the symbol for the gradient vector. And so the formula for the gradient vector once again is going to be the partial derivative of the function with respect to x times i, plus the partial derivative of the function with respect to y times j, and then plus partial derivative of the function with respect to z times k if we had three variables x, y, and z. Now the formula for del just by itself, well we're just going to take the formula for the gradient vector and remove f. So it's just going to be the partial derivative with respect to x times i, plus partial derivative with respect to y times j, and then plus the partial derivative with respect to z times k. So given a vector field f of three variables x, y, and z, the formula for the curl of the vector field f is going to be equal to the cross product of del and the vector field. And the formula for the divergence of f is going to be equal to the dot product of del and f, the vector field. So for these first set of problems, let's go ahead and find the curl and divergence of the vector field. So for number one, we have f of xyz equals xyz times i minus x squared y times k. So let's go ahead and first start by finding the curl of the vector field. So the curl of the vector field f, once again, the formula is going to be the cross product of the del and the vector field. Now if I go ahead and write the formula for del once again, we have the partial derivative with respect to x times i plus partial derivative with respect to y times j, and then plus another partial derivative with respect to z this time times k. So if we're going to go ahead and take the cross product of del and f, we need to set up a matrix here. So once again, in a cross product, we'll put i, j, and k on the top. Since del is being multiplied first, we'll put its components. So its components, once again, are right here. So from left to right, we'll go partial derivative with respect to x, partial derivative with respect to y, and then partial derivative with respect to z. And then we'll put the vector fields components next. So x, y, z goes with i, so that's going to be the x component. Notice there is no j unit vector in the middle. So basically the y component is zero. And then for the z component, or with the k unit vector, don't forget we do have a negative there. So it's going to be negative x squared y. So now we need to go ahead and find the determinant. So we're going to pick the top leftmost term here. So i, in a smaller matrix, we're going to cross off its row and column and write what's left in the smaller matrix. So we have the partial derivative with respect to y, partial derivative with respect to z, 0, and negative x squared y. The second term is going to be a negative, so negative. And we're going to pick the middle term from the top row, so j. We're going to then cross off its row and column and write what's left. So we have the partial derivative with respect to x, partial derivative with respect to z, x, y, z, and then negative x squared y. And then finally, the third term is going to be positive. We have k. Go ahead, cross off its row and column and write what's left. So we get partial derivative with respect to x partial derivative with respect to y, and then we get x, y, z, and 0. So now we can go ahead and simplify. So we get i times, now we cross multiply, and this time when we cross multiply here, if I go ahead and write out the terms from left to right, we have partial derivative with respect to y multiplied by negative x squared y. What we're basically doing here is we're going to partially derive negative x squared y with respect to y. So what is the partial derivative with respect to y? of negative x squared y, well that's just going to be negative x squared. Minus, we multiply these two. So what is the partial derivative with respect to z of 0? Well that's just 0. So then we have minus j times, well what's the partial derivative with respect to x of negative x squared y? Well that's going to be negative 2xy. Minus, what's the partial derivative with respect to z of xyz? Well that's going to be x times y. And then plus k times well, what's the partial derivative with respect to x of 0? That's going to be 0. Minus the partial derivative with respect to y of x, y, z is going to be x, z. So then simplifying even further, we have i times negative x squared minus 0, just negative x squared, minus j times now negative 2xy minus 1xy is going to be negative 3xy. And then plus k times 0 minus x, z is just going to be negative x, z. So the final answer is going to be negative x squared times i 
and then negatives will cancel here, so we have plus 3xy times j. And then we do have a minus here, so then we have minus x times z times k. So that's going to be the curl of f. So now let's go ahead and find the divergence of f, or the divergence of the vector field. Now once again, the formula is the dot product of del and the vector field. So this one's obviously going to be much faster than curl, because we're only using the dot product. So if I write the components of del once more, we have del equals partial derivative with respect to x times i, plus partial derivative with respect to y times j, plus partial derivative with respect to z times k. So when we're doing the dot product, obviously we're going to multiply similar components. So with the i unit vector, we have partial derivative with respect to x and x, y, z. So obviously we're going to put the partial derivative first times x, y, z. And then plus, so now we're going to multiply the y components together. So with the j unit vector, we have the partial derivative with respect to y times, well remember there's no y component in the vector field since there's no j unit vector. So it's basically going to be zero. And then plus, we have partial derivative with respect to z times what goes with the k unit vector, so that's going to be negative x squared y. So the partial derivative with respect to x of x, y, z is going to be y times z plus the partial derivative with respect to y of 0 is 0. And then plus the partial derivative with respect to z of negative x squared y is just going to be 0 because there's no z variable. So the final answer is going to be y times z as the divergence of f. So realize that when you calculate the curl, you will end up getting another vector as a result because the curl uses the cross product. And because the divergence of f in that formula, we have to use the dot product, we'll just get a scalar value like y times z. So now for number two, let's go ahead and find the curl and divergence of the vector field f, which is equal to e to the x sine of y times i, plus e to the x cosine y times j, and then plus z times k. So let's go ahead and calculate the curl of the vector field f first. So once again, for curl, we have to take the cross product of del and f. So when we take the cross product, we're going to create a matrix. So we have i, j, and k on the top row. Since del is being multiplied first, we can put its components. Remember, del's components are always going to be the same. So it's always going to be partial derivative with respect to x, partial derivative with respect to y, and partial derivative with respect to z. And so for f's components, we have e to the x sine of y, e to the x cosine y, and then z. So now let's go ahead and find the determinant. So we have i, we take the top leftmost term, so i times the smaller matrix of, now we cross out its rolling column, and so we write what's left, so we have partial derivative with respect to y, partial derivative with respect to z, we have e to the x cosine y, and then z. Second term is going to be negative, so negative j times the matrix of, we cross out its rolling column, what we have left is partial derivative with respect to x, partial derivative with respect to z, e to the x sine of y, and then z. Third term is a positive, k times the matrix, we cross out its rolling column, and what we have left is partial derivative with respect to x, partial derivative with respect to y, e to the x sine of y, and e to the x cosine y. So now let's go ahead and evaluate. So we have i times, now when we cross multiply once again, we're going to take the partial derivative with respect to y of z. Since there is no y variable, the partial derivative is just 0, minus partial derivative with respect to z of e to the x cosine y is 0 minus j times, now partial derivative with respect to x of z is also 0, minus partial derivative with respect to z of e to the x sine y is also 0. Now plus k times, partial derivative with respect to x of e to the x cosine y is just going to remain as e to the x cosine y, minus partial derivative with respect to y of e to the x sine of y, well the derivative of sine of y is cosine y, so we have e to the x cosine y. So once again, 0 minus 0, so all of these will cancel because they'll all get zeros. And so the curl of f is actually just going to be 0. Now the curl of f actually equaling 0 is something I'll talk about in the next set of problems. So now for number 3, we have f of x, y, z equal. So now let's go ahead and find the divergence of the vector field. So the formula for divergence is going to be the dot product of del and f. So once again, in order to find the dot product, we're going to multiply similar components together. So the x component of del 
once again, is going to stay the same. It's just going to be partial derivative with respect to x. And we have times the x component of the vector field f, which is e to the x times sine of y, plus the y component of del is partial derivative with respect to y times y component of the vector field is e to the x cosine y. And then plus the z component of del is going to be partial derivative with respect to z times, and then we just have z. So now let me evaluate the partial derivative with respect to x of e to the x sine of y is just going to be e to the x sine of y plus partial derivative with respect to y of e to the x cosine y is going to be e to the x negative sine of y or times negative sine of y because the derivative of cosine y is negative sine and then plus partial derivative with respect to z of z is just going to be 1. So if I rewrite this we basically have e to the x sine of y the negative can come out front, so we have minus e to the x sine of y plus 1. Obviously those will cancel, and so we're left with the divergence of the vector field being equal to 1. So now for number 3, we have f of x, y, z equals ln x, ln of x, y, and ln of x, y, z in vector component form. So let's go ahead and find the curl first. So we take the del operator, cross product del and f. So once again, we're going to set up a matrix. i, j, and k will be the top row. Since del is being multiplied first, we'll put its components down. Once again, it's always going to stay the same. Partial derivative with respect to x, partial derivative with respect to y, and partial derivative with respect to z. And then we'll put f's components. So the x component is going to be ln x. The y component is ln x, y. And the z component is ln of x, y, z. So now let's go ahead and find the determinant. So we have i times a smaller matrix. We'll cross out its row and column. And we're left with the partial derivative with respect to y, partial derivative with respect to z. We have ln of x times y. And then we have ln of x, y, z. The second term is going to be a minus. So we have j times a smaller matrix. Cross out its row and column. What we're left with is partial derivative with respect to x partial derivative with respect to z, ln of x, and then ln of x, y, z. Now the third term is a positive, so plus k times. In a matrix, we cross off its row and column, and what we're left with is partial derivative with respect to x, partial derivative with respect to y, and then we have ln x, and then ln of x times y. So now let's go ahead and evaluate and cross multiply. So we have i times now the partial derivative with respect to y of ln of x, y, z. Now remember, the derivative of ln of some function u is going to be u prime over u. So we're going to go ahead and take the partial derivative of that inside function with respect to y. So that is just going to be x times z over the entire inside function x, y, z. Minus, now this time the partial derivative with respect to z of ln of x, y. Since there is no z variable, the partial derivative is just 0. Now minus j times the partial derivative with respect to x of ln of x, y, z. We're going to take the partial derivative of the inside function with respect to x, that's just y times z, over the entire inside function, x, y, z. Minus partial derivative with respect to z of ln x. There is no z variable, so the partial derivative is 0. Plus k times partial derivative with respect to x of ln of x, y. We're going to take the partial derivative with respect to x of the inside function, x times y which is going to be y over the inside function itself, x times y, minus partial derivative with respect to y of ln x, which is 0. So now we can go ahead and simplify. So we have i times, now xz, xz will cancel, so we have 1 over y, minus j times yz, yz will cancel, so 1 over x, and then plus k times, well, y's will cancel, and so we're left with 1 over x as well. So the final answer for the curl of f, or the curl of the vector field, is going to be 1 over y times i minus 1 over x times j, and then plus 1 over x times k. Now since the problem was given to us in component form, we could also write it in component form where we have 1 over y, negative 1 over x, and then comma 1 over x. So both of these are acceptable answers as well. So now let's move on to finding the divergence of the vector field. Once again, we're going to take the dot product this time of del and the vector field. So when we take the dot product, we're just going to multiply similar components. So the x component of del is going to be partial derivative with respect to x, 
times x component of the vector field is ln x plus we have partial derivative with respect to y times y component of the vector field is ln of x times y and then we have plus partial derivative with respect to z times z component of the vector field which is ln of x y z so the partial derivative with respect to x of the natural log of x is just 1 over x plus partial derivative with respect to y of ln xy is going to be x over xy and then we have plus partial derivative with respect to z of ln of xyz which is going to be x times y over xyz go ahead and rewrite that xyz so the final answer for the divergence of the vector field f is going to be 1 over x plus x's will cancel so 1 over y plus xy's will cancel so 1 over z so now the next problem is going to be determining whether or not a vector field is conservative so when we have three variables x y and z the simple formula is just going to be finding the curl of f so if the curl of the vector field f is equal to zero then we know the vector field is conservative so for this next problem let's go ahead and determine whether or not the vector field is conservative so for number one we have f of x y z equals 2xy times i plus x squared plus 2yz times j and then plus y squared times k so once again the formula to determine whether or not the vector field is conservative is that the curl of f must equal zero so let's go ahead and find the curl of f once again the curl is going to be the cross product of del and f so in order to do this we need to set up a matrix so we have i j and k on the top row now we put in del's components so partial derivative with respect to x partial derivative with respect to y partial derivative with respect to z let's go ahead and put in vector the vector fields components so we have 2xy with the i we have x squared plus 2yz with the j and then y squared with the k so now let's go ahead and find the determinant so we have i times if i go ahead and write i times a smaller matrix we cross out its row and column what we have left is partial derivative with respect to y partial derivative with respect to z we have x squared plus 2yz and then we have y squared second term is a negative j times a smaller matrix we cross out its row and column partial derivative with respect to x partial derivative with respect to z we have 2xy and then we have y squared and then we have plus k times now we cross out its row and column partial derivative with respect to x partial derivative with respect to y we have 2xy and then x squared plus 2yz so now we can go ahead and evaluate so we have i times we cross multiply here so the partial derivative with respect to y of y squared is going to be 2y minus partial derivative with respect to z of x squared plus 2yz is just going to be 2y go ahead and write 2y here minus j times partial derivative with respect to x of y squared is 0 minus partial derivative with respect to z of 2xy is also 0 and then finally we have plus k times partial derivative with respect to x of x squared plus 2yz is going to be 2x minus partial derivative with respect to y of 2xy is going to be 2x as well so 2x minus 2x is 0 so that will cancel 0 minus 0 that will cancel and 2y minus 2y that will also cancel so we get that the curl of the vector field f equals 0 which tells us that yes this vector field is conservative